I made a decision today to take a break from my motorcycle and battle the Manila traffic in cool comfort. And luckily enough, I have a couple friends at the bike dealership, my friends George and Mickey, and they're gonna show me what my options are to travel around in comfort and luxury. I'm Jamie Dempsey. And I'm back in the Philippines. Here we go. Exploring the country's capital, Metro Manila. Oh, I think this is actually happening. I have no idea what to expect. I'm strong, like bull. That's what I I feel like queen of the world. Let's roll. So Mickey, what have you picked out for me? So we've narrowed it down to two choices for you, the bike M60 and the bike BJ20. All right, sounds pretty sweet. Let's see what they look like. Let's go. Got that new car smell. I love that smell. The first thing I notice I want to show right here is the carbon fiber. This right here, um, a detail on the inside. Yeah. I have the same design here on my helmet. Oh, okay. So it matches. Pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. And then since you um, described the design, actually like this one, the the red. Mm -hmm. This is actually a Mercedes-Benz design that was patterned here because actually bike is partly owned by Daimler who makes Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Oh, wow. By the way, this unit has um, panoramic sunroof. So what? Whoa, hold on. Everything. Yes, you had me at panoramic sunroof. I just opened it for you. Oh, oh, look at the other model looks like. All right, let's go. Check right. in the interior Ooh, here. The first thing I noticed is I really like the design of the seats. Mm -hmm. How it's white and black. Are these leather as well? Yes, they are leather as well. And then look at the screen here. You can see that it's already digital cluster. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There's two type, like here. You yep. can see like the door open. And then even the tank, gas tank, is also digital. Everything is digital here. Also very high tech and very space age looking. I've had a lot to think about. They both have really great things going for them. Which one do you think says Jamie? The BJ20. <laughs> it's an SUV. <laughs> She's totally right. That's the one I chose. BJ20 <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I've been touring around Metro Manila and I wanted to spend the day today getting to know Makati. And what better way to do that than with a visit to Mayor Abby Binay. Hi Jamie. Hi, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So normally when I come to the Philippines, I head straight out to the provinces. But this time around, I wanted to get to know the different cities of Metro Manila more personally. And I thought you could help me do that with Makati. I'm the perfect person to ask. <laughs> so good thing you caught me on a break, so try for some coffee. I'm always down for a coffee break. Let's do it. I know that cities are always growing and changing and developing, so I'm curious, what are the changes that Makati is going through right now? Well, uh, ever since I started, we are pushing toward digital or smart cities. And that will be our backbone for our other infrastructure projects. So it's like building our own telco. So, well, first we have to resolve is our issue of traffic. Makati being the central business district, there's a daytime population of over 5 million. Yeah, I noticed it was very busy. And there's a nighttime population of less than 1 million. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of people that just work or pass through the city but actually don't 
live here. Mm, that's very much like downtown Los Angeles. Correct. That's very, very similar. So what do you do? We have to be able to address our issue of, of traffic, so we have to build our own mass transport system. Mm -hmm. being the central business district, we are also very prone to bomb threats and we have to make sure that the city is always secure. Even when people are sleeping at night, they sleep well knowing that we have eyes and ears everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we have um, existing over a hundred CCTV cameras and it is access to our command center that we built in 2006 but we have recently upgraded them for live streaming. So we will be able to respond quickly in terms of disaster. Oh. So I'm giving you free access, VIP access, to be able to look at our C3. That is so cool. I've always wanted to be in one of those rooms with all the screens and all the action going on. So, so you're going to be like your own 911. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> so it's that way. All right, off I go. Let's roll. Let's roll. You guys are not going to believe where I'm at. Sir Richie, tell everyone where we are and what you do here. We are here now at the Operations Center of Makati City. We're in the 23rd floor where the surveillance cameras are located, or the monitors. So here are my people uh, uh, monitoring uh, what's going on in the city. Look out, I'm watching you. Okay, here we are at the workstation. So Richie, what are we looking at? Right here are the different streets of Makati City, like in Jay Perdizal, Makati, and Jay Perdizal, Makati Avenue. These are icons for different cameras. Like, like this one, these are body-worn cameras uh, by our PSDs. So they, they're monitoring the traffic situation in the city. So this happens 24-7? Yes, definitely, 24-7. Uh, like any other operation center in the world. So this is for seven just to ensure the safety of uh, the people in Makati City. And these people over here that I thought are back, they work really hard uh, for 12 hour shifts. You can see the incident that has been called. It's uh, located in Makati Avenue, corner uh, J. Perizal, Makati. I think this is go, actually go, go, happening. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. We're going, we're going. We're going. People are watching. I'm trying to stay out of the way. We have police here, we have fire trucks. Okay, we're getting ready to pick her up and move her. Here we go. All right, very quickly the team responded so fast, jumped out of the car, got to her wounds, cleaned her up, secured her nicely on the board, and already we're ready to take her in for care. Our operation terminated now. Our operation successful. Okay, for a while there, I thought we were 
responding to a real incident, but in fact, it was a very realistic drill. And my new friend, Sir Anthony here, is the man in charge of that. Yeah. Do you do drills like that all the time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, for a building that uh, they're going to use uh, our, our skills for the drill, then we use it. This is the size of the response team? Yeah, yeah. This is the same also. This is the same numbers. This is the same people. Uh, you uh, still respond in an app. My heart is still beating a little bit. <laughs> well, that has been a crazy experience. I'm super grateful that I've got to witness a real drill happening. And I'm very grateful for everyone like yourself that responds to these emergency situations and takes care of people in need. And I am really grateful that that was not real. Let's roll! feeling where I'm going, I'm going to need a little cash in my pocket. So, stopping at my bank, gonna take out some money. Oh, you thought I was gonna show you where I'm taking money out? No, 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 no. I'm here visiting my friend Crazy Kyle, the Pinoy picker. Hi. <laughs> so we have a crazy amount of awesome stuff in your shop. Yeah. People might not know this, and I certainly didn't know this before I met you, but what exactly is a picker? Basically, a picker is a person who likes antiques, likes vintage stuff, goes from house to house, provinces, digs through a pile of uh, junk just to find uh, some of the forgotten treasures or gold, like we call it. caught my eye was this massive bottle wall Yeah, here. this is my uh, addiction now. The vintage and antique bottles from all over the Philippines, from the 90s, 80s, 50s. I even have some pre-war bottles in here. So, all from yeah. the Philippines? All from the Philippines because uh, for the collectors, uh, they want the locally made items because um, of course it has the history and it has nostalgia. You have to have a little bit of historical knowledge to know which bottles are worth value, and yeah. which ones are no longer in existence. For example, this one. This bottle is uh, 7,500. It's from Balintawak, Quezon City. So it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the company closed down, but uh, the way you can tell if, is uh, uh, the bottom of the bottle doesn't have the lines there. If, if it's new, it will have lines there oh. and then um, so if you buy a soda later you will see oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so the old ones don't have that but what's your most valuable one? my most valuable one is this one uh, which is basically uh, the most expensive one also that oh I got gosh. I'm like so afraid of uh, yeah. one of these will drop and break <laughs> <laughs> this one I, uh, I got it for 36,000 pesos there were rumors that these were asked to be destroyed. A company that was against it asked them to destroy everything, so very few survived. This is the Halili beer, yeah. So, Super yeah. rare. Well, Kyle, I want to go out and pick something special, but okay. first I need a couple of tips. How do I go for you? Well, the biggest tip I can give you is once you enter an antique shop, you look for the most expensive item in the store and then you buy it for me. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Okay, well, can you point us in a direction we can go to? You're gonna go with me, right? Well, uh, let me show you the underground of Makati where the antiques are and the vintage items. Right. Are, yeah? We are going to the underground, Bangkal. <laughs> Yeah, this street is very famous for furniture, vintage items, antiques. The other thing I love in these old shops are the old photos, all the yeah. black and white photos. This one's perfect for you. Oh, look at that! Yeah. It's motorcycles! So mostly you can tell that it's original if it has this. If you see the embossed seal oh. right there at the bottom, you would know it's not a reproduction or a reprint. Paper bills and coins, so yeah. 
Yep, that part's very familiar. And the patina and everything, the, the wood aging. Yeah, you can there. see here. I know a lot of people that um, are very into vintage cars and they're always saying, don't, don't paint, paint it, it yeah. keep it patina. Yeah, but just fix the, the engine the and then and then keep the outside yeah. like that. Let's see, I don't want to break it, but let's see if we can check. Oh, there. look at that, there wow, there's some authentication. Yeah. Yeah, we were right, 1900s, and then, yeah, wow, from Ohio. super old, no way! National cash register, My there. My dad lives in Ohio. And it's intact, so it's really nice. Oh, it's very, it's very, efficient. very, yeah. Usually it's already faded and for. All right, I'll take it, 2,000 pesos. Yeah, 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're gonna sell it to us for 2,000. <laughs> Hello, Jean. Hi. I've been expecting you. I didn't realize there was someone behind me. I'm Jamie. Wait, you already know my name. Yes. How is that possible? It's impossible not to know you. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my tarot cards read a couple of times before, mm -hmm. and a couple of times it's been pretty freaky how spot on they are. But I don't really know how they work. All right, so let me explain it to you, Jamie. When I read for you, I tell you three things. I tell you where you've been, where you, where you are, and where you could be going. So let's start off by looking at your present position. Okay. And we have death reversed, now don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> this card actually shows to me that there will be a lot of changes coming into your life, but they're gonna be changes that you want to implement. When okay? you say reverse, what does that mean? All right, it usually means a deviation of the original meaning of the card. Ah, okay. Well, if it's upside down, it's kind of like telling us that it's mourning your hands. So like if you wanna change your hair color, or change where you live, or change your job, or change your relationships, these are gonna, might be changing where I live. I can imagine. So this is what's going to be coming your way okay. this 2019 because your immediate influence is the Nine of Wands. And this card shows to me that there are going to be a lot of options offered to you. Mm. But remember, options are not obligations. Options are good though. Exactly. Okay. Because your hopes and dreams show to me that you're a perpetual learner. And one of the secrets that keep you so young and beautiful is that you're always letting new things into your life. Okay? Yeah. You don't want to become stale. And as long, I mean, even when you're into your late 70s, you're still going to be allowing new things, new energies, new ideas, thought forms to enter your life because you have a very open mind and an empty cup. That's true. I'm going to be a hip old lady. I can imagine. Because for the last card of this simple spread, your future influences shows to me more travel. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Actually, it shows to me you're going to be seeing even new parts of the world that you haven't seen before. Um, the gypsy in you will continuously be on the road for the coming year. That does not surprise me. Thank you so much. Well, it looks like I have good things in store for me in the future. I'm going to be traveling, I'm going to follow my intuition, and uh, just be open to new experiences. Always be groovy. <laughs>